comes in, like I said, I think it's going to be sign code next. And um, yeah, hope, uh, hope this was helpful. And of course, anytime you have questions, just let me know. Let me know if something comes up. Happy to answer. So we can't deny anything tonight because the applicant didn't show up at Is that what I get? We can't. <laughs> well, you know. Can't use that as your finding. <laughs> it, you know, could be. A, <laughs> I would just say it could be a deferral. It could even sometimes end up as a denial if, if I don't like questions what can't wearing. be. <laughs> I don't. Your hat is offensive. Am I muted?
right. All right, at this time we will call to order the City of Kenai Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for June 23rd, 2021. Will you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Item A2, roll call, please. Chair Twait? Here. Commissioner Springer is absent. Commissioner Halstead? Here. Commissioner Doffett is absent. Vice Chair Fikes? Here. Commissioner Greenberg? Here. Commissioner Woodard? Here. You have a quorum. All right, thank you. Item A3, agenda approval. Commissioner Halstead? I move we approve the agenda with the addition of the laydown, uh, additional laydown for F1. All right, we have a second. A second. Any objections? Seeing none, the agenda is approved. Item A4, consent agenda. <laughs> Commissioner Halstead. I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. We have a second. I'll second. All right, any objections? Seeing none, the consent agenda is approved. That will take us down to item C, scheduled public comment. We have none. Uh, item D, unscheduled public comment. Anyone wishing to speak to an item? that is not on the agenda tonight. Okay, so not on the agenda, so. Correct. Okay, then you can please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Thanks. Hi, I'm Kelly Kelso from 408 Rogers Road. And um, so Rogers Road, you know, uh, we live on the, well, one of the most beautiful um, subdivisions in the city of Kenai you should be proudest of. I know when we got our house there, I was really so excited because we're on the little bluff, you know, where Dr. Hansen's place is, looking out over the wetlands. And we came uh, probably two or three years ago because all of a sudden, I think it was Big Mike was wanting to do a gravel pit. And you guys were very, we felt like you really listened to us as a neighborhood, that we were concerned about some issues. And um, I know that you have a lot of restrictions when you're talking planning and zoning. There's lists of things that are permissible or not. So I know we don't have a lot to stand on, but I would ask you to consider that we are a premier residential neighborhood. You should probably laugh at that, but I feel that way. And we are butting up to an industrial commercial neighborhood. So any consider consideration at mitigation, we were thinking maybe um, uh, my understanding is that Schillings is wanting to build a couple more storage sheds and, um, you know, green roofs, green buildings, something that would blend in a little better. We would be very appreciative of something like that to be taken into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. I guess we could take questions. If anyone has oh, no, any? Okay. All right. We're good. Thank you. All right. Any Anyone else wishing to speak to anything that's not on the agenda? Okay. My name is Barb Christian. I live at 410 Rogers Road, right next door to Kelso. And um, I just wanted to address you in the same spirit that we came to Alaska 50 years and some ago, uh, with the idea to help build an ideal community and help the city to grow and contribute as we could. And that's the spirit in which I'm speaking to you tonight. Um, we also live on that bluff and uh, love looking out at the wetlands. And I wanted just uh, to kind of reiterate what Kelly said, that in, the, in keeping Kenai, the ideal all-American city that we first moved into here, we are interested in keeping as the uh, development down there as attractive as possible. And Kelly mentioned that colors that would not be so striking down there would be helpful, something green and brown that blends in so it isn't so glaring from where we sit. And uh, the lighting, we've noticed that there are enormous lights over the current buildings there and they, they show right into our houses at night. I don't know why it's necessary for them to be directed up as much as down if that's something that uh, could be considered when permits are issued. 
Um, those things are especially important to us and also the protection of the wetlands. With uh, climate change and the rising of the oceans, uh, as we are told, wetlands are just going to get wetter. And I'm con kind of concerned about things being built in the wetlands because it destroys the wetlands and also because the future of such structures might be questionable <laughs> if the water keeps rising because those are pretty wet in wet years. So the wetlands um, more uh, blending in colors for buildings down there and something about the directing of the big lights are our concerns in the neighborhood. Uh, thank you for all that you do. Uh, we love Kenai. We lived here a long time and we want to continue to live here. Thanks for what you do to keep the place livable. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Appreciate the comments. Anyone else? All right. We will move on. Item E, consideration of plats. We have none. It will take us to item F. F1 is it for public hearing is resolution PZ 2021-24. It is an application for a conditional use permit for a firewood bundling business in the rural residential zone on lot 24, block 3, VIP Ranch Estates, subdivision part 6, located at 2825 Bowpicker Lane. Application submitted by Tracy Headland smith 2740 Setnet Court. Can I get a motion, please? Commissioner Halstead. I move we approve resolution PZ 2021-24 application for conditional use permit. All right, and a second. Second. Vice Chair Fike seconds. All right, staff report. Thank you, Chair Twait and fellow commissioners. Uh, my name is Ryan Foster. I'll be giving the staff presentation this evening. Uh, this is on resolution PZ 2021-24. It's a conditional use permit for a firewood bundling business. Um, uh, also the use uh, known as a storage yard in our code, and that's at 2825 Bow Picker Lane. I did want to note a couple things um, before we get started. Uh, there is a laydown uh, packet, um, and that was uh, provided uh, this afternoon. Um, um, uh, uh, yesterday and today, um, staff receive a number of um, uh, email uh, letters, uh, so we compiled those and included those. Um, uh, as a lay down packet uh, 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 for this evening. Um, and I would note that I believe all of them were uh, in an objection to, um, to this uh, condition use permit application. Uh, I did want to note one other, uh, one other thing is that there was um, uh, a bit of an issue with the sign posting, and so the sign posting is, is 10 days in advance of the hearing. Um, staff, we had written the wrong date on there. Somehow we ended up with September 23rd instead of June 23rd. I don't know how we, we launched it that far in the future. Uh, what we did do is we went out that Monday um, and uh, change it to the correct date. We also sent postcards uh, to property owners within the 300 foot radius to again confirm that the, the uh, public hearing was uh, this evening, uh, June 23rd. Uh, quick summary, uh, uh, the applicant is uh, Tracy Hedlund Smith at 2740 Setnet Court, uh, Kenai, Alaska. Uh, the property address is 2825 Bowpicker Lane. Um, it's approximately uh, 0.92 acres, so a little under an acre uh, a property. Uh, it's zoned uh, rural residential. Currently is, is vacant. Um, uh, there is a, um, a, a slab uh, where a previous home um, was located that, that burned down. So currently the, um, the property is vacant and then the land use plan is a low density uh, residential. And here we can see the uh, aerial photo show, showing the subject parcel uh, on uh, Bow Picker Lane. Here we have a draft site plan um, which has a proposal for a firewood bundling uh, uh, business. Um, and so we can see here on that um, you know, concrete pad, uh, there'll be a, 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 a tent set up that is considered a, um, uh, you know, a temporary structure. It's not considered a permanent structure. It's something that would not require a building permit uh, for this site plan. Um, and so we're, we're, um, we're seeing a site plan where uh, deliveries would come in uh, from bow picker, uh, drop off uh, rounds of, of, of wood, 
um, to be split and then uh, bundled uh, and then delivered to um, uh, retail establishments uh, in, in the community. Uh, neighboring properties include primarily single family uh, uh, residential in the vicinity of the subject property. Uh, staff's analysis is uh, uh, per, key, per Kenai Municipal Code 142150D. Um, there's review criteria for conditional use permits. So per, pursuant to KMC 142150A, the intent of a conditional use permit is to allow some uses that may be compatible with the designated principal uses in specific zoning districts provided certain conditions are met. Uh, KMC 142150D, Conditional Use Permits Review Criteria, states that there are six conditions that the Planning and Zoning Commission must deem to exist when establishing findings prior to issuing a conditional use uh, permit. And we're going to talk about those um, six criteria next. Criteria one, the use is consistent with the purpose of this chapter and the purposes and intent of the zoning district. And staff's response is that the proposed firewood bundling business meets the intent of a rural residential zone to provide for low density residential development in outlining rural areas in a form which creates a stable and attractive residential environment. And the specific intent in establishing this, uh, this zone is to separate residential uses to an extent which will preserve the rural open quality of the environment prevent health hazards in areas not served by public water and sewer, and two, to prohibit uses which would A, violate the residential character of the environment, and B, generate heavy traffic in predominantly residential areas. The land use table provides that a storage yard is a conditional use, therefore a conditional use permit must be granted to allow the operation of a firewood bundling business. The applicant has provided a site plan that indicates where the outside activities will occur on a concrete pad that was the location of a home that burned down. The layout of the property is such that the firewood bundling business would not violate the neighborhood character of surrounding parcels as there is sufficient space and there are trees providing a buffer from adjacent properties on the north, east, and south sides of the parcel. Traffic generated from approximately two truck trips a week uh, uh, delivering um, wood rounds is not anticipated to bring heavy tra traffic into an existing neighborhood. And certainly in comparison to a residential home, um, probably um, a residential home probably generates uh, far more traffic than, um, than the use of this application. Um, the business plan is to split wood rounds and bundle it on the property seasonally from April through October. Operating hours are Saturday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and wood will be dropped off approximately once a week via Dodge Ford pickup with trailer. Equipment used will be an electric bunder and a gas-operated splitter. Uh, chainsaws are not needed since the wood is dropped off in pre-cut rounds that only need to be split for bundling. The applicant states that the electric bundler does not make noise and that the wood splitter sounds like a lawnmower. Due to the long operating hours stated and the noise associated with a gas-operated splitter, um, which again is, is very similar to like a lawnmower or a generator or something, you know, something along, um, uh, along those lines, which, which does make, you know, does make noise. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission may consider whether the purchase of an elect electric splitter would be advisable or considered as a condition for approval of a conditional use permit. Um, and certainly the, the, um, the potential have a, a discussion about the, the, the operating hours. I don't believe due to conversations I've had with the applicant that the intent is to be continuously operating during those hours, you know, seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., but really just to be a window for, for operating. But, um, you know, based on what's stated here, um, you know, staff thinks that it might be uh, worthwhile uh, having a discussion about that this evening. Uh, this is a small family operated business. Uh, Tracy Hedlund Smith also owns and resides at the adjacent property to the east on 2740 Set Net Court. Uh, the only vehicles allowed on the property would be the delivery trucks, the trucks that drop off rounds of wood, and the truck that hauls the bundles out. Uh, after bundling, the bundles are delivered via truck to local retail establishments. Uh, a garage tent, considered a temporary structure, will be utilized for the firewood bundling business. A building permit is not required for this temporary structure, uh, though any permanent structures in the future would require a building permit. 
Criteria two, the value of the adjoining property and neighborhood will not be significantly impaired. Staff's response is the surrounding neighborhood consists of primarily single family dwellings to the north, south, east, and west with a vacant lot to the south of the subject property. An all zone rural residential east of Bow Picker Lane uh, with Kenai Peninsula Borough properties to the west of Bow Picker Lane. Uh, this property had a single family home at one time that burned down was not rebuilt. There are trees providing a buffer from adjacent properties on the north, east, and south sides of the parcel. Uh, there are no permanent improvements associated with this condition use permit application and therefore should not significantly impair the adjoining uh, property values. Criteria three, the proposed use is in, in harmony with the comprehensive plan. Staff's response is that the comprehensive plan has goals to support businesses and economic development and to provide a high quality of life within the city. Goal two of the comprehensive plan is to provide economic development to support the fiscal health of Kenai. A firewood bundling business provides support to local retail establishments. Low density residential land uses typically include uh, single family low density large lots with individual on site water supply and wastewater disposal systems. Below are specific goals and objectives from the comprehensive plan that support the CUP application. Uh, that's D2, implement business friendly regulations, taxation incentives to create a stable positive climate for private investment. Criteria four, public services and facilities are adequate to serve the proposed use. Staff's response is the properties located along Bow Picker Lane are served by private wells and septic systems and have access to natural gas, electricity, and telephone services. Bow Picker Lane is a gravel and maintained road. Uh, the operation of a firewood bundling business would not have an impact on, on any of these services. Criteria five, the proposed use will not be harmful to the public safety, health, or welfare. Staff's response is the use of a firewood bundling business will not be harmful to public safety, health, and welfare. Staff believes that services are available to adequately serve this development. Uh, the applicant has provided the city with a, with a draft site plan which indicates there will be su sufficient space for operations and that access to the property is provided from Bow Picker <coughs> Lane. Uh, criteria six, specific conditions deemed necessary. Um, and staff's response is to see conditions of approval uh, set, board, set forth below. And in these recommendations, city staff find that the applicant meets the criteria for issuance of a conditional use permit as set forth in subsections D1 through D6 of Kenai Municipal Code 1421.50 and hereby recommends that the Planning and Zoning Commission approve the conditional use permit application subject to the following conditions. Uh, one, further development of property should conform to all federal, state of Alaska, and local regulations. A yearly con uh, condition two, a yearly conditional use permit report must be su submitted to the City of Kenai prior to the 31st day of December of each year. Uh, condition three, the applicant will meet with city staff for on-site inspections when requested. Condition four, if there's a change of use for the above described property, a new conditional use permit must be obtained pursuant to 1420-150 I-5. Condition five, pursuant to KMC 1420-150 I-2, this permit shall expire automatically upon termination or interruption of the use for a period of at least one year. And condition six, failure to provide documentation to the city for meeting these conditions shall be grounds for the suspension or revocation of the conditional use permit. That concludes my presentation. I'm happy to stand for questions. All right, uh, at this time we will open it up for public testimony. We'll start by taking testimony uh, from anyone here in person and then we'll go to anyone out there that's uh, on the Zoom platform. Um, just a couple of things. You come forward, state your name and address for the record. You'll have three minutes. You'll see the clock there, too. As you're getting close to three minutes, try to wrap it up. Finish your sentence. I'll let you carry on your last thoughts after three minutes if you need to. Direct everything this way. Don't turn and, and talk to the public so we can hear you and understand you. And then after your three minutes, somebody probably will have a question for you. So make sure and stand around for questions. So with that, who wants to come up first? Go ahead. I have you just again state your name and address for the record, please. And you can stand or sit, whichever you feel comfortable doing. Right here? Yep, right there. Okay. Yeah, my name is Joe Lyons, and I live at 2715 Bow Picker Lane, which is right next door to where the headlands have 
the application for the bundling permit. And I don't know if you have these photos or not. Particularly this this one right here. Yep, we got this. Do you have that? Yeah. Okay, that is actually my back of my house right there. My garage right there is my rear entry door, the man door. It faces right into that area. And it shows basically there's nothing there. There's no buffer there. There's no fence. There's no trees. They're all gone. All you see is stumps. And since uh, 1971, no, 19, or 2017, I believe, when we first started getting this first Beatles problem, it was, it's gone downhill since then. We've had probably three different years that I've had trees upwards to 20, 21 trees removed. And they're all dying over there. So it's just like a disaster area. You can kind of see by the pictures what it looks like. And it, it's a true story. It just looks like a terrible thing. Now, I don't know. I just have a few things to say. And I'd like to thank the planning board and the commission to allow us to speak here. I'm not much on speaking, but the operation of ours is, seems really expensive to me, seven days, 10 hours a day. And the pitch and wine of the uh, log splitter and the generator that's going to run them, whatever it's going to be, is pretty hard for me to understand because it's more than a pitch and a wine. It's, it's a vibration. It's hard on your ears and your hearing. The gas but gas driven engine is always they uh, we can hear the neighbors start their engines in every day and we know which direction it's coming from. But it, it, it's just not a very good deal. It's kind of a fire danger over there right now too. And I don't know if, if you have a plan for evacuation if there is a big fire over there other than calling the fire department there's not very much there but I've lived there or myself since 1996 and that has been 25 years and we've seen a lot of changes we've seen the house burn down next door Just, uh, terrible thing that's going on over there. And I'm opposed to this bundling operation because as you can see by the picture, there is no buffer zone. There is no buffer there. There's no trees. There's nothing growing there. And there used to be a building and the building burnt down 20, 20 some years ago. And now they want to put up a temporary plastic structure over there for some sort of a building. And I don't see how that could be allowed to happen either because it's just beyond me to think that it would pass any kind of a building code to do that. So basically, I'm kind of opposed to the whole thing. They're nice people. I've talked to them a couple times. We get along fine. We say hi. But I'm opposed to the operation. All right. I'll see if anyone has any questions for you. Anyone have any questions? Well, you got off easy with that one. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Anyone else? Yep. Please come forward. Hi. My name is Marta Eldridge, and I live at 2679 Bowfaker Lane. I've lived there since 1985. And just last, about 12 days ago, I had 18 of my trees had to be felled because of the beetle kill. My next door neighbor hasn't had a chance to really look to see where our property line is 
but there are quite a few that I can see that are going to have to go. And across the street from me, which happens to be in the borough, I think you know that the bow pickers are dividing, he just felled a bunch of his trees. And um, this gentleman right now just finished saying there's nothing between his house and, and the next property. But when they were there for the whole day doing my trees and putting them through just a chipper, I was inside my home that has beautiful brand new windows as of last year with the double panes and all the things that we need here in Alaska. And I had my earplugs in the whole day because they were running that chipper. And I, I am three houses away. The third house by is where this is going to be happening. And, um, and I, I can tell you that just the thought of the noise is, an, is enough to really say, um, first of all, that we're going to be very stressed. And I fortunately are older and don't have, you know, I'm 81. So I'm not going to be here for the length of time that the rest of the people may be here. But if they're here all these 36 years like I have, their children or grandchildren are going to be impacted with this whole thing, with, their, with not only the hearing, but how it affects their whole development and so on. And there are some families like right next door to me who have young children that are just you know school-age children. And that's really my concern is that, and again, which was mentioned by the group that was here just before us that was wanting to conserve the wild, the wetlands, the, the beauty of the animals that are there that had a yearling drop right almost every single year at the same spot. And I'm, I keep saying, I have to look it up. Is this the great grandma of the one that, you know, <laughs> because I don't know how long a moose lives. I don't hunt, so I don't know any of that. But that's, that just happened like a week ago or two weeks ago now. And, and the, the birds and all of the rest that are there, uh, I, I've even had bear scat in my yard. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you know, we are a wild area. And I don't particularly want bear scat <laughs> or bears that close by. But it is a wild area, even though it's a subdivision and so on, and almost, you know, almost that acre that we have. We have 99.92 or something, whatever it is. But I really appreciate you listening to all of us and, and the realization that it's, you know, it, it really is the noise that is going to be a problem and the danger of a fire. So thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? All right. All right, next. Good evening. My name is Mary Rowley. I live at 371705 Minky Drive. I've been there since 2009. We're the third driveway away from this particular lot. I do take exception with access to this place because um, bow picker itself is only a partial street from where this site is out to k beach cannot be accessed by a truck you have to go either down minky drive to get to it or you have to drive through the vip subdivision which is <clears throat> excuse me filled with family homes and children and bikes and pets and dogs to get to this particular lot so you can't get from this lot to K Beach. You're either going to come down Minky or you're going to go through VIP to come down Bow Picker. Okay? So <clears throat> I have an exception with that because I live on Minky. And you know, to say that maybe it, there's going to be a drop off once a week and maybe a pickup once a week, that sounds very reasonable. But <clears throat> with people chopping trees down as much as they are, and our area, as you've heard, is decimated. So, and we're getting ready to cut about 20 trees down on our property. Our neighbors next to us between my house and this proposed site uh, clear-cutted their property. So there's fewer and fewer trees between us and this property, and the noise will carry further. Um, and you're having large vehicles where there, it is a neighborhood where children play, and um, you know there is livestock, you know, chickens and things like that, that on, on that. We don't know, um, I, I, just to throw, I don't know, would they be spraying this wood for beetle kill? Uh, if so, we would like to know that. That's just something to take into consideration because it would get into our water. Most of us are on a well. Uh, I'm not in the city limits. Minky is borough property. Bow Picker is the city line. 
So I don't know that I have much to say as far as that goes, but uh, just so you under, kind of understand uh, where we're coming from, um, will it affect our home insurance rates? I think that's a, a reasonable thing to ask if there's that going on. Um, how much dust is going to be generated? Uh, particularly, I know that uh, Joe and his wife are a little bit more elderly, and you know that's an issue for them. Um, I don't know how much. I know our covenants say no um, business, but we can obviously petition for things like a bed and breakfast or a guide, but that doesn't include a uh, byproduct, if you will, of, of this uh, chopping the wood and things like that. And, you know, will it raise fire rates? I don't know. I'm just saying these are things that we've asked the, the council to consider a good deal more before you give permission for this business to go forward and be able to tell us that, no, it's not going to affect our insurance rate, it's not going to affect our homeowners, because people are putting a lot of money in their homes in that area. And, um, and now's the time to do it. So we'd like to know that a little bit before we make a decision on that. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. I'm going to be reading from a statement simply because I tend to digress. Good evening. I am present this evening to oppose the application resolution. Can I interrupt you just real quick so you can state your name and address for the record, please? Resolution 202124. Oh, My name is Andrea <laughs> Johnson, 37315 Minky Drive in Kenai. My phone on record is 760-9903-7845. First, we ask that this commission, in good faith and with due diligence, order an on-site inspection for this rev resolution. We find discrepancies in the resolutions as noted. The application statements are misleading or not entirely true. An error in posting the hearing date was untimely for the properties to be notified to file a proper rebuke. Bowpicker Bow Picker Lane is not a through lane, and it is impossible for any vehicle to use it exclusively for drop-off or delivery. Roads affected will be VIP, SetNet, SetNet Court, Bay Lane, Bow Picker Lane, Cetacea Lane, and Minky Drive. We will argue that 10 hours per day, 70 hours per week, is excessive in every aspect of our personal daily activities. We have gone to great efforts in making our home and yard conducive to great wildlife and bird watching enjoyment. We will argue that in fact delivering rounds of wood during a bark beetle epidemic is a very real danger to those within miles of any proposed firewood bundling business. For the past two years, we have been working on mitigating bark beetle on our property by removing approximately 124 trees. Unfortunately, we are going to be having to remove more this year at great expense. We will argue that the City of Kenai Planning and Zoning Commission's approval of a firewood bundling business during this current epidemic has a huge risk implication considering that the Kenai Peninsula is under a burn ban. We have not seen uh, any liability binders for this business within the resolution pages that I've reviewed. I've sent photos for your review. They are mine. These photos are co compelling statements in our argument against this business. Commerce is necessary and needed, however, we can provide adequate property lease options for this business right on Cape Beach Road. I thank you for your attention. I am willing to offer any additional information to assist the City of Kenai's <coughs> Planning and Zoning Commission in rendering a proper decision. Thank you. All right. Anyone have any questions? I, I, can you explain what you mean by the burn ban? I'm curious. What uh, You're worried that they're going to burn on the property? I'm, I'm uh, actually, well, part of it could be that, but I doubt immensely it would be that. I'm trying to figure out how a firewood bundling company can sell 
commercial retail bundles of wood during a burn ban? What's the purpose? Well, I think if you use wood to heat your house, that would be certainly something you could have this for, correct? I mean, I... Oh, that, correct. So that is not the intent of this business, however. That is not what we were told. We were, there was explanation given to neighbors that stated this was for their grandchildren so that they could bundle it, they could go to the beach and sell the bundles of wood to the dip netters, quote unquote. Okay. okay. Anyone else have any questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Um, yep. Oh, hang on. We got. My name is Trudy Jones, and I live on 2730 Setnet Court, um, right next door to where this will be happening. And I think my. Um, so, so far this summer, there has been bundles of wood exiting our neighborhood already, um, probably with that intention. It hasn't been um, a problem because, you know, it's just been going out. But I guess um, I came for more information tonight, and my big concern would be access to the land. Um, we were the ones that actually called the fire department, my husband did, when that house burnt. So you can tell where we're at property wise and then we're right next to our neighbors um bring the the truck access would be a concern it's often i go out to work and there's kids playing in the ditch playing our cul-de-sac is is like the neighborhood play area because it's a safe place um our kids grew up there and now we have a whole new generation of little guys that are playing there they come from the back streets where this property's at from um they come from VIP all because we're in a cul-de-sac. So I think I would just want you to really maybe get more information, um, really look at the trucking that's gonna be coming through. I believe that it would only be able to come through our neighborhood. So my concern would be just making sure you check the safety of that um, with all kids, especially the little ones that, you know, they're on their bikes constantly. They're going back and forth on their scooters. And the only way I see it could get there is on VIP past our area. So just consider that when you're looking or at least, um, in, you know, look into more information on that to exactly how many trucks will be hauling in and out. Um, and maybe the size. I don't know how big it will be. I wasn't, when I first heard about it, I thought maybe it was just clearing the lot, you know, and just taking care of the wood in the area. But... I didn't realize there might be wood trucked in, so um, I'd appreciate it if you would consider that and look into that. So thank you. Absolutely. Anyone have any questions? <laughs> oh, guess what? Got a question for you, Trudy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, um, I didn't think I was going to speak today. I just wanted to uh, talk about that, yeah. So you stated that you lived at a cul-de-sac. Is your cul-de-sac paved or is your cul-de-sac gravel? Our cul-de-sac is paved. It is paved? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's gravel behind you? It is, so um, we're, at, it, we're almost at the very end of the cul-de-sac, oh, and then um, our neighbors are at the very end, and so they have almost two lots there, and so the next street over is not paved, and that's kind of, you know, if our, if our property's here, it's just right here on the corner of that. Um, and then the gentleman that spoke first, he's right behind us. We just met him because we could never see him until all of our beetle kill this year. And <laughs> so now we can see our neighbors even more clearly because our yard is pretty empty because we are clearing out the dead trees. It's really, really sad how many died in our neighborhood. So it's an unfortunate thing, but hopefully we can save the young trees and grow up some new ones. And, but yeah. All right. Thank you. Maybe we spurred another question, maybe. Who knows? Anyone else? All right, thank you. thank you. All right. So I'm Matt Smith, um, the husband to Tracy Hedlund Smith. Uh, I live at 2740 Setnet Court. Um, when we originally bought the property, we actually did it on behalf of, we didn't want somebody buying the property and turn it into a duplex right behind us. 
We wanted to keep it as it was. But as this season started coming around, we had beetle kill everywhere. Um, the, the wood that we have had dropped off the rounds were seasoned wood because that's what we're trying to get into. But it was seasoned, so I doubt if there was any beetles in it. Um, but I would like to say if somebody had built a house on that original property, we'd be looking at more traffic on that street than we're going to produce. Most of our traveling back and forth to that is going to be through our backyard to it. Um, I don't have grandkids yet. I mean, maybe they'll come one of these days. But uh, it was going to be planned to be a family, me and my wife and the kids helping us bundle. That was our goal. And we do know of somebody who does a fire bundling business, and he is in bad health. And that is where we got the idea from. We saw all these trees that we needed to cut down ourselves. I have seen all of our neighbors just whacking trees left and right. And most of our trees ain't don't come from outside. We ain't probably don't have any deliveries this year. I mean, honestly, we have so much wood that we wouldn't need to deliver anything. But we are also focused on getting this to see if it's sustainable, to see if we can make something on this before I go and buy a piece of commercial property and find out that I lost everything in the, in the hat. You know, my goal is to make us and, you know, hopefully Kenai a better place to work and, you know, have things. I have a business now. It's VIP Monitoring Services. Um, the pandemic kind of hit that. So we are trying to open up new streams of revenue to keep us where we're at and hopefully stay afloat. So I hope that says something. I'm sure we got questions. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> uh, anyone have any questions? Well, I will start then. I've got a few. So um, the hours of operation have been identified. How many months out of the year do you expect to do this? I, I can't imagine doing it in January necessarily, but... No, Possibly. I, don't, I don't. We don't plan on doing it in January. Um, probably towards breakup, you know, when you can start moving things around. I mean, it's going to that whole pad is probably going to be snowed in. I mean, we have a plow, but you know, unless you're doing it on a regular basis, it's just going to get snowed in. So we don't plan on going there over there much. But during the splitting operation, uh, a lot of folks have been saying there's no buffer. There is not really a tree buffer. But that foundation actually isn't just a slab, it's a four foot wall, four foot pony wall that goes around. And so it, we figure that bouncing the vibrations off the muffler would m mostly bring it straight up. It wouldn't be hearing, I mean, I ran the equipment over on the property. I mean, it's, it's less than a lawnmower. And if need be, yeah, we could go through electric splitter. Um, we're just trying to get an electrician to get in there because the house did burn down. We got to find the line, make sure we have enough to tie into and bring it up and then get the power company to come over here, approve the, the outlets that we can put in. And then we haven't done anything more because we wanted to get to this point first. But that is our, our goal, uh, probably not during the winter months. And that was my next question. I was wondering if there was power there and if that was an option. So that, that um, answers that. Um, in the 10-hour day, is there – I'm not sure what it looks like as far as who's working, how many people are working. Is it – could you split half the day and then the bundling takes place, or is it going to be running the splitter Correct. 10 no, hours a day? The splitter is only going to run for a few hours, and then – but we wanted to give you guys the actual – idea of how long we're going to be on that property. I mean, if, if we run the splitter for two hours in the morning or two hours around lunchtime, we'll be bundling for the rest of the day. The splitter is, well, we bought a 25-ton splitter, so it can split a log four ways at one time. And that was something else we looked at. We looked at making it less time with more product. So we went and bought the best of the best. Bundler's not noisy? No, it's just an electric motor that spins it, and it just wraps. Okay. Um, and although I commend anyone that wants to work seven days a week, especially lately. That is that, not, that is not that's, a goal. We just wanted to make sure we okay. had where if 
Saturday seemed like a good day. It wasn't fishing for her. I would, we could go over there and bundle and it wouldn't be, hey, you can't do that. We just, we need to be able to do it when we can do it. And if you don't want us doing it on a certain day, that's fine too. We just wanted to give us a, a way to be able to do it anytime we could do it. We do have full-time jobs too, so that's some of it too. Gotcha. Okay, um, and then my other question is, you get a load dropped off a week. That week, that week's supply is handled in a week's time, or how long is stuff going to sit on the ground? I'm, I guess I'm wondering if we're we don't want to see a big pile, pile sitting there that Correct. could be a potential fire down the Correct. line. We're, we got to weigh that. As like I said, there isn't going to be any loads this year. I mean, we got wood on our property. We got wood on the other property. We're still cutting down trees. So as it stands right now, there won't be any deliveries. But I would think one load is, I think it was like two cords, and we'd be able to process that. And if we run out, then we just wait for the next load. I mean, it's, this is not going to be our primary business until we figure out a way of making it our primary business. This is kind of Avon for woodcutters. So I guess on potentially a downside on that then, so you could be running a chainsaw a whole lot more this year than taking care of stuff in the neighborhood oh, yeah. than after We're all, you're getting stuff delivered. So right yeah, now. I mean, that's kind of the normal sound we're hearing everywhere right now. Yeah. So okay. We've been cutting them down uh, the last couple of weeks. We've been cutting down trees left and right. And we're also talking to the gentleman that comes around with that machine that grabs them. We're trying to thin it out to where it doesn't cost us fifty dollars a tree to get him to do them. And you wouldn't be opposed to potentially if we said, okay, Saturdays and Sundays bundling only or something like that, where you're not making noise and no. okay. All right, good to know. All right, anyone else have any questions? Uh, oh, see, oh. I knew it. Once I got started, oh, everything. Uh, Commissioner Greenberg. Is all the wood going to be inside of that uh, concrete foundation? That's what we're trying. It's all going to yes. stay in there. It will all be delivered. I don't know if you can pull up that picture. I kind of, I, it was a terrible, I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to But anyways, the back end, of, the foundation's probably 40, 45 feet long. The tent's 20 foot. So we have a large section at the back end. That's where the, it would be delivered and dropped to the back. Right now we have that filled up with wood from us. So then we would bring it through, split it right there, put it in the tent, wrap it, and stack it up in the tent. And then a truck could, we could bring the truck over, stack it in the back of the truck. And if we don't sell it, then we can store it in my shop that's on my other property. Thank you. Um, so it, nobody's going to see this pile of wood. Well, right now everybody can see it because the woods are starting to go. But, I, I mean, but when your operation's going, your tent's going to be above the wood, and the wood's going to be in the foundation, so it won't be anywhere else on the property, no, no, or the, nobody would have access to tent, it. Okay. And that'll be in front of but anything that's behind it. Okay, so, yeah, so nobody will see it. Or... Hopefully not, no. Okay. And then uh, is this, uh, have you consulted with, like, uh, Department of Forestry or the fire department uh, for fire safety reasons and have enough defensible space just in case something would start, that this wouldn't be something that can't get put out. That, that is would... something we can, we've already started taking notes. Having fire extinguishers are already part of the deal, but we See, can definitely talk to somebody about getting a fire line that's built around it. Yeah, um, so you would have some precautions. If a fire did start, you'd be able to, you know, it wouldn't get to be such a big fire, you know. And, and the structure itself, is that fireproof? Uh, it's just concrete, and uh, it's a, uh, what, Arctic tent that, like you get at AIH. Okay. It's a 20 foot by 12 foot. Okay, thank you. All right, Commissioner Halstead. Um, so do you have an idea of what kind of volume you would be putting out uh, initially to get to a stage and then at what stage, if it took off, where you would say, okay, I'm, I've outgrown this location? Well. At, at the point where we started thinking about this, we've actually talked about, I don't know if any of you know VIP, over off Beaver Loop, you've con done the conditional use. We want to sell that house to somebody and move into a commercial property where we would have a yard on the back side of it. So we're way, weighing that right now. But of course, 
you know, everybody's fighting this COVID. We don't know where we're going to be on, you know, two months from now. You know, VIP could dry up. We're just trying to make sure. But yes, that, that is the goal. We want to put it in a residential or a commercial area that so we can your do. Initial your initial output would be, you have an idea of what you'd be putting out? Uh, it'd be nice to see, you know, two, 300 bundles of, uh, a month at least. And I said price. I mean, we haven't even locked down contracts with anybody. We're just trying to make something happen. And then when you're talking about truckloads of wood, you're talking about like a standard pickup truck, not a flatbed or a semi or anything no, like that coming in? No, it's strictly a Ford, like Super Duty, uh, six-foot bed, and he had a, a trailer, uh, like a, a truck bed trailer that he drug the wood in on. Okay. Thank you. Vice Chair Fikes. So what kind of a business model would you be looking at? So this is an abandoned property. Like, say, I had a concern with the fire safety and some kind of a mitigation plan as well. Since you're not going to be residing there, but there'll be neighbors that are residing there, certainly wouldn't want to add any fuel to the problem already. We actually we reside right... Right from, next door? Yeah, right. Actually, it, it, if we had it rezoned, it could be one entire lot for us. Okay. We just didn't want to go that route. Okay. So it's it's actually backs our property. Oh, okay. So gotcha. we're on 2740, and then it's right behind. Us. <laughs> so are you going to have like a sign and a stand or something right nope. out front? Or are you going to go make deliveries this is on the just beach? Strictly or? taking it out. We're okay. we're going to try to hit campgrounds until we can lock down so, like Williams. So foot traffic or road traffic is not really sounding like what's going to happen. It sounds like you're going to go out and market this to the folks. The folks yeah. aren't going to come to you. Is that a realistic? Okay. So our truck okay. will be the thing that comes and goes. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? So just so we're clear, uh, there was a little conversation about the ingress and egress out of there and the path that's going to happen so what can you tell us what your thoughts are as far as where are the vehicle how what's the path the vehicle is going to take what i would say they probably take vip cut over from setnet over down bow picker and then right up to the property okay and that yes it is not a through fare except for all the four wheelers and, <laughs> and dirt bikes that fly through there all the time yep on that same note, is it a dedicated, who main, it may be through the staff, who maintains Bowpecker? Because I've heard testimony that it's, it's not true. I think the city does. City road, isn't it? Yeah, it just comes up to a dead And is it a mud a pit at times during at, no, rain? No, just at the very end, there's a, like a four-wheel trail. And it, you can see, you can see K Beach from it. I mean, it just and never got Can finished. you pass two vehicles, or is it just one vehicle at a time, or? Technically, you could pass two if they were both four-wheel drive. Okay. I mean, I drove over it with the Hummer, so. Yeah. You have a lot of clearance there. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions? All right. Thank you. Anyone else here in the chambers that would like to testify? All right. We'll go out into Zoom land with it. All right, if you're on Zoom and you'd like to testify, um, please raise your hand or unmute yourself and state your name and address for the record. Gene Backstrom, it looks like you've unmuted yourself. Um, Can you see me? Yeah, I I did. My name is Gene Baxter. I live on uh, Bathing Avenue, right at the uh, end of where Bob Picker meets. I butt up against the property. I have no problem with people trying to better themselves and stuff, but not in a residential area. Um, the noise, our son lives right next door. And they just had uh, two two brand new babies, the little twins, and a toddler. And I think the noise, we can hear the noise constantly. And I think the noise will affect them. It sounds like uh, from the testimony that he wants to just make this a temporary uh, setting, but you know I have my doubts. 
I think the the traffic, and if it gets established and stuff, the traffic that uh, will generate will be a hazard to the the kids in the neighborhood. And Balpicker is a designated city street. However, it is not maintained during the winter time, and it's not a thoroughfare. However, it is if you go on the GPS, it does show the way it goes all the way through. And I'm, I'm just afraid that we're going to generate too much traffic in our neighborhood for this. It's a residential neighborhood. It's quiet, like everybody says. It's a quiet place, and I can't, I can't hate to see it uh, move away from that. So I'm opposed to this uh, temporary permitting. That's all I got to say. I'm opposed to it. All right. Thank you. Let me see if anyone has any questions for you. It doesn't appear so, so thank you very much. All right, is there anyone else on Zoom who would like to testify? Please uh, raise your hand or unmute yourself. Can you hear me? We can. Can you hear me? Okay, my name is Barb Backstrom. I'm the wife to Jean Backstrom who just talked. Uh, we live at 940 Baleen. We recently bought the property at 950 Baleen, which is directly south, east, sorry, east of uh, th this property that we're talking about. Um, it's very close to the Vagabond. And I'm concerned because we are the primary childcare for the twins that were just born and the toddler, and I'm, I'm really concerned about the noise. We intend to build a house on that property. We've already built a garage, and um, I already am not happy about all the, the, in the four-wheelers and the snow machines that will be going down that, that, that already go down that road. So to have another thing in the neighborhood that's commercial in a residential area that's going to create more noise I'm definitely opposed to that. So I just want to put that on record that I'm very opposed to the extra noise, the extra traffic, all the extra, you know, all the kids that are running around. There's, there's the kids can kind of feel safe about running around up and down the streets in the neighborhood. We don't have sidewalks. So it's not like the kids can play on the sidewalks with their bikes and toys and stuff. So they're kind of on the roads a lot and I don't think this is a really good idea for our residential neighborhood. That's all. All right, thank you very much. Anyone have any questions? Seeing none, uh, again, thank you very much. Anyone else? Nobody else there? Anyone else here in the chambers that would like to testify? Two seven five five Setnet Court, right on the corner of Setnet and Setnet Court. Um, I feel like if we'd have had this gentleman talk right off the get go, it probably would have maybe saved some questions, <laughs> maybe for next time. But um, my concern really was having to listen to it. I'm I'm across from the Jones, and and they're right at the end of my cul-de-sac here, and we've chat and chatted and everything and. and there's no ill will at all, especially for somebody that's trying to get, uh, you know, their kids active and in work and all that. I was just curious, as is the council, so when you give a permit, I've never done this before, um, can it be like uh, stipulated that you have a permit for a year or whatever and then reassess something at the end of that? Is that possible? I mean, I want it to be just like you say, it, it's going to be. I think it was in the. Okay, I, I haven't read the whole thing, and I'm just curious if it's possible. Maybe that would be something we could do. Um, like I said, I want people to be working and making money for their kids, and I don't like the noise. And it doesn't sound like there's going to be a lot of noise, especially if he goes with an electrical um, splitter or generator or whatever uh, you got going on there. But 
my concern was the size of the vehicles that were going to be coming back and forth, how big it was, and 10 hours a day, seven days a week, the noise. And it sounds like I understand a little bit more right now, but it would be neat if, because if it takes off, it is a residential neighborhood, and I feel like there's commercial spots somewhere that would probably be yeah. better, like you said. And is there any way, I'm sure in the past, people said something and didn't do it, and I'm not saying that about this gentleman at all. Is there ways that the council can ensure that, I guess? Any questions for me? All right. Anyone have any questions? Vice Chair Fikes. So you brought up the noise. Just out of curiosity, do you guys hear anything from the bar that's nearby on? Absolutely. <laughs> and we, more and more now. I mean, they haven't hard, had but one, I think, uh, outdoor concert or anything like that or whatever they call it. But And then uh, side-by-sides, ATVs, do you hear those day in, day out? Yep. All day long. Not all day long. As soon as dip netting starts. Yeah. They will be whipping up and down the set net court right there, <coughs> you know, like like they always do, hmm. and it gets, I mean, it gets it's dangerous crazy, there yeah. for kids and puppies and everything else check, right there. So, a few bucks, that's all. like I said, it doesn't sound like there's going to be that much more traffic there, but it, it is definitely a concern. So hearing what you're saying about that and the other activities that take place and the other folks that have testified that the area has been thinned out from the trees, what would you think would be a buffer for some of that noise? Would you think a, like he had suggested, the foundation that exists there or a earthen berm between the neighboring structures or a fence, a partial fence? Uh, that's a really good question. I mean, I think an earthen berm would probably be the best possible solution maybe or, or an indoor type of deal, but he's just starting out. so. Trying, sure, and it out. sounds like the property is, you know, stumps and whatnot, and that's why I thought maybe just a piece of equipment that could push up a berm to one side or something to contain the noise is just what I was curious about. But if you, I see where you're going yeah. with that, and I'm not the one living next door to him, like, like, not to him, but I do sort of. Yeah. Being right up next to where the actual process is going to be happening. I don't want to say anything about that because I haven't heard the process. I hear saws going all the time around us. I've got, I did 19 trees last year. I got 21 trees I got to do this year on my one little acre. Uh, the buffer is gone. Just take a look around there. And if it's not gone yet, people are saving money to have pay somebody to take care of their trees. So it's just, I know you're already going to take that in consideration. So. I do. I got them right in my backyard, and it drives me nuts. So. Okay. <laughs> I love birds. Don't get me wrong. I'm not rattling on the side of my house or a tree right next to it. So. I won't get the birders coming to your house that way. All right, good. Thank you. All right, anyone else? Hi, I'm Tracy Hedlund Smith. I am the applicant. Um. I do want this to be a small family business. I know we did put in here that we're going to be doing all these hours. We're not going to be working all these hours. We do have a full-time job, my husband and I. If we get deliveries, if somebody calls us up and says, hey, can I have 10, to 10 bundles? I would like to take it out to them. I do not want the public coming to us. We do have private signs, private property signs. I'm sorry, I'm really nervous. <laughs> um, I don't want the public coming to us. I don't want more traffic. Um, we are cutting more trees down. We do have wildlife there. We do have a moose with a mama and a baby. So we don't go over there when she's over there. We cut on our land when she's over there. We, as of right now, we don't have any buyers for our bundles. Um, so this might not even go through. I'm hoping it does <laughs> because we have about 100 trees that need to come down between the two 
between the two pieces of land that we have. And that's what I'm, that's what we're trying to do right now is trying to cut down and clear the land because it is a fire hazard. We don't want, our house is right next to this land. I don't want a fire hazard. I can see, I made sure, what the first thing we did was cut a path right to the property so I can see the land, so I can see if people are coming onto the land that shouldn't be. So I can go over there and say, excuse me, can you please leave? Um, so I do have one kid that loves to go outside and play. He plays out in the streets. I have one kid that loves to play games. It would be nice to get them both over there and help splitting and getting their hands dirty. And I do understand my kids are out on the road. So I'm not going to be driving around 90 miles an hour. My, my kids are out there too. And I'm worried about them. And I tell them, you see a vehicle coming? Get out of the way. So, um, no, we are not planning on spraying anything. Um, we are looking for seasoned wood, but that would be later down the road this year or not. Oh, did you mean to do that? I, that, I think that's it. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see if anyone has any questions for you. Commissioner Woodard. So did I understand that you say you are going to split the wood that you're cutting off of your property? We are, yes. And, and sell that? Yes. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Like an auctioneer here. Going once. All right. Looks like everyone's done. No one else jumped on? Okay. At this time, then, we will close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for discussion. Any discussion? Commissioner Halstead. Um, just my thoughts on the matter. I think, uh, you know, it's great to see uh, the entrepreneurial nature. We definitely have the, uh, the, the resources available to, to split wood, especially in that neighborhood. Uh, uh, I've got family that's, that's in that area. As well, um, I think the nature of, of what you're trying to do does not necessarily lend itself to a large amount of noise. Um, you know, a wood splitter compared to the amount of uh, wood cutting that's going down in the area is rather uh, minute, uh, especially since you're not necessarily going to be running it every day or, or all day long every day. I think a few hours in the afternoon or what would be, uh, you know, obviously not first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening is, is, is pretty much understood. Uh, I also, it sounds like um, that, you know, if it does grow to the point where it could become a, uh, a larger traffic concern or a larger noise concern that it sounds like this, uh, this applicant is, would be moving in out of that location anyways. So um, I think within the year or two that it takes to figure out if this is going to flourish or not, um, you're going to hear much more chainsaw noise and other people in the, in the area cutting down trees. And I think um, my inclination at this point is to, to vote in favor of it. Uh, just the, um, the I, I don't see the, uh, the noise issue or the, uh, I don't necessarily see a higher traffic issue, especially in the summertime. That road's being used a lot for people getting down to the beach. Uh, and as uh, growing up in that area, I know that road, that hole was dug out to prevent people from getting, getting to the beach that way so that to, to cut down on some of the traffic, but they just went around it anyway. So uh, again, I think uh, this, is a, this is something I would vote yes on. All right. Um, Commissioner Greenberg. Um, I, too, think we have a big problem with beetle kill and, and a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of material out there that, uh, somebody doing something with like this would be, would be great. Um, I do have concerns about the noise. Um, 
I think it. Uh, I think the lot is open to the neighbors, and having a gasoline engine running a lot could be. Um, could be detriment, you know, that could be noisy. My neighbor has a two and a half acre lot and he was running a, I don't know what he was running, but it was noisy, you know, and, and if he was running it all the time, I wouldn't be super happy about it. Um, it would be, uh, but that could be remedied either through um, somehow enclosing that within the structure or using an electric splitter. So I don't think that's an insurmountable issue. And then I do have uh, concerns about this, um, stockpiling of wood in an area where uh, it could be a fire hazard and I don't know that we uh, have enough information about the amount of wood or uh, the uh, arrangement of wood that would minimize that hazard which is something that I think we could get from uh, a fire marshal or from uh, uh, the division of forestry so I think I think we I, I uh, like the idea of this and I think if it was kept to a certain scale um, in order for the for them to uh, try this business and then to, and to get moving, it could move once it goes beyond that threshold that they could find a bigger lot. I don't know what that scale is, um, but I think what we would want to do is I would want to know more information from a fire professional, and I, and I'd want to see that noise minimized. So, and if if we could come up with the conditions through this uh, meeting, that would be good, or, or if we needed to consult somebody about the fire hazard, I think that might be a good idea. Uh, and I'll just mention uh, a couple of things. First, uh, there was a question about reviewing it after a year, and I'm gonna defer to Mr. Foster on that, but so there is a, a annual review, but I believe it, it wouldn't be to whether to continue the conditional use, it's, it's a review to make sure that the criteria to keep a conditional use is met. But I'll ask Mr. Foster to clarify that a little bit. So I, I don't know that we have the ability to say, this is good for one year only, and if it doesn't feel right, we can rescind it necessarily. But could you answer that for me, please? Yes, thank you, Chair Tway. Um, so that is correct where um, really the way that conditional use permit works is, is uh, you know, upon approval, approval and, and um, you know, providing the, the permit itself, um, there is an annual report and it really is to, um, it's really a check-in to say whether that use is continuing and, um, and, and whether, you know, certain other conditions are being met uh, of that permit. So it's, um, I, I'd say within our code, there's nothing that really um, provides an option to say um, that a, a condition use permit can be for a certain length of time. Um, now, having said that, um, as far as conditions for conditional use permits, you know, generally speaking, you know, I find that the commission, the Planning and Zoning Commission, does have the authority. Um, to to create you know conditions for you know a conditional use permit. So I, I don't believe there's any precedent for setting time limits on conditional use permits in the city of Kenai. So I think it would actually be um, if there were to be a condition to set you know a, a timeline to um, let's say you know I guess check in and reassess. I guess the the question is how what that mechanism would B, because right now it's an annual report uh, that, that's submitted, uh, staff receives it, we check to make sure, you know, all these conditions are met, and, and we, we file it away. Um, whereas I think with a check-in, the question would be what's the, since we don't have code that says what the process should be, I think there would certainly have to be um, thought on that type of condition. You know, what's, what is the check-in? Is it, to, is it, you know, is it to come back and do another, another hearing? Is it to, uh, so I, I think it, it sort of um, uh, kind of begs additional questions knowing that that's not how conditional use permits are um, created in code. So um, that might not be the most, um, um, you know, clear answer to it where, where again, the, the code doesn't give that opportunity, but, you know, the, the commission does have the authority to create conditions. And, and if you did create a condition, I do think you'd be, you would be setting uh, precedent in this case. 
All right. Well, that kind of takes me to the second part of what I was going to suggest is I think one of the things that would drive having the conditional use permit um, reviewed and, and terminated, if you will, um, if we put conditions of hours of operation and say no wood splitting on Saturday and Sunday and then there was proof that they were doing that, that would be one of those things that could trigger something like that. So I would suggest that we maybe discuss if we would like to put some bumpers in place that would maybe help them, help everyone here as far as being able to find something that might be common ground to live with. So with that, I'll hand it off to Vice Chair Fikes. Yeah, I, I concur with what I heard. Um, I, I do agree with um, s uh, staff. I do believe that the applicants have met the criteria for conditional use permit. And uh, I do believe I, I hear loud and clear the testimony from the um, surrounding neighbors. But I also heard from the applicant who stated that she does live in the area immediately next to her intended uh, application of operation and I did hear that she is a parent and she is just as concerned as a parent about noise and road traffic so it sounds like the common theme of everybody's concern is noise and I, I don't necessarily have the um, answer to that but I'm, I'm also concerned when we start putting these conditions on the um, conditional use permit how are we differentiating as people had testified? So you're gonna have hours of operation between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. and possibly think about maybe restricting any kind of noise taking place only between noon and four. But here comes a four wheeler and here comes a neighbor over here dropping his trees and here comes a troubadour having a backdoor barbecue and you know, noise is noise is noise. And so I don't know where you make that decision or that dividing point is my concern. So I hear everybody's complaint on that, but I also hear that they're trying to get this going. They really don't have a clear path forward. It's a starting point, and their desire is to go and take the product that they create and take it somewhere else. It doesn't sound like their intent is to have a whole lot of traffic come to them. And it brings me right back to the fact that they live directly next door. And it doesn't sound like, as a resident of the area, they want any more traffic than their neighbors. So I think, as a commissioner, that, that kind of cements my decision right there that I, I don't really see a need for the hours of operation to control the noise. But maybe there's other commissioners that think differently. All right, thank you. Let's see if they do. Commissioner Halstead. I would agree with uh, Ms. Fikes on that matter as well. I think uh, putting additional restrictions on a way, just for the sake of making some people feel better, it, it sounds like they're they're there. They're, they're going to be affected with as much as anybody else. Um, and I, I hate to to add a bunch of restrictions to stop somebody from just for the sake of uh, of putting them on there. Commissioner Woodard. Did you not say one of the stipulations on renewing or reviewing a conditional use was if there were complaints? So if Mr. there were Foster. complaints over if they did do it and there was enough complaints, that could be something to rescind that? And I'll let Mr. Foster answer that, I guess. But if there is no, if there is there are no conditions as far as noise goes, then a complaint about noise wouldn't really be relevant as far as uh, terminating, I would, I would say. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chair Twait, uh, Commissioner Woodard. Um, yes, yeah, so the, the, the conditions and in, in in those that are, that are provided in, in the draft resolution, again, those are, those are draft conditions that are just recommended by staff, and, and certainly the commission can, can add you know, conditions uh, at this time. So what I would say is that with a conditional use permit, um, those conditions, if they are found not to be met, there is a process in code to revoke a conditional use permit. Um, and so it would be based on the conditions that are a part of that approval resolution. Uh, I would say that right now there, there isn't anything that specifically says per this case anything about um, 
you know, specifically dealing with, with noise, you know, at this time. So in that case, um, you know, it wouldn't be a condition that would be able to be reviewed to consider for a potential revocation um, if a condition was being violated. Though there are the other parts of, of city code that does deal with, um, with, with noise. So there, there, um, the, you know, there, there are times where, um, and p potentially it could be a, uh, an operation, a business, a, a, a residence that they don't even need a conditional use permit, it's a permitted use. Um, there are times where you know, a, a noise ordinance, a different section of code um, uh, would apply. So um, yeah, so just to be clear, when it comes to, to conditions and conditional use permits, if at any time they're found to be um, you know, not being, you know, followed and, and, and not living up to those conditions, that is an opportunity for revocation. And I'll end on that, that one thing that, that as far as, um, you know, that, the idea of the time frame that it's an, you know, basically it's an annual permit to, to establish that a, a, a conditional use is, is being, you know, carried on, you know, from year to year. Kind of the intent of that is that Oftentimes, once a, a conditional use permit is granted, revocation is typically would be based on something egregious. It, it's it's the idea is that you know this permit's been given as long as they're following their conditions, as long as they're you know doing their annual report, um, it's not likely to be revoked. And, and some of it comes down to the fact that you know a lot of our, the conditional use permits in the community. Are based on 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 somebody operating a business, and I think once they're established, there is you know difficulty in, in looking to, to revoke a permit. And I would just say it usually would have to be um, you know a, a condition associated with that approval resolution, and it would likely have to be um, you know egregious and and unresolvable. Um, the code gives an opportunity. Uh, for a permit holder to to mitigate um, you know any issues they might have with their with their permit Thank you Vice Chair Fikes I guess first For the applicant only one other thing I could think of as far as like a condition and you guys had touched on it both staff and uh, the applicant and that was the hazard mitigation plan and adding fuels to an area that people are already trying to remove fuels from and so as a condition um, if you'd had any conversations with the division of forestry uh, are you considering any kind of a staging as far as pumps or any kind of a, a temporary t uh, pool if you will to operate the pump in the event that you did have any kind of an ignition source and it is an operation of business, but there's obviously no sprinkler systems. Um, I understand that's not a, a, a city water over there, so you're talking about how fast can you suppress something in the event of an issue. And then if that's the case, is there any kind of uh, additional insurance that would be taking place on the property? Well, actually, I don't know that we can... Have I know we come we, back we up. closed yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, so this um, is just me talking out loud. Yeah, and, and, and I, I don't apologize. know that again as far as insurances and things like that. That kind of gets out of our scope of what our job is as far as conditional use. But I, I agree, um, you know, best practices or something just labeled sure. as best practices and and doing that would probably take that. I would I would argue that probably. It's more of a fire hazard right now in that neighborhood until some of these trees come down and it'll probably yeah. be minimized once some of that's taken care of. Um, Commissioner Greenberg, do you have something? Yeah, I, I just agree that uh, just some, uh, some level of, of review uh, with forestry or something that uh, ensures that what you're doing is best practices and we're not creating more, we're not adding to the problem. I, I know that the work that you're doing is is, is ultimately going to help the problem, but uh, while we're doing, it, we just just to be sure that we're not adding to that problem would be something I think that would be advantageous and, and, and something we should look into. Can Vice Chair Fikes, maybe just as simple as having a walkthrough or on-site inspection with either the fire department or 
Division of Forestry signing off on approval or is that and an unreasonable it, request? I think any of those things would have to be handled through an amendment to add a condition. If we wanted to say we want to see a review with Firewise program or any of that kind of stuff, I think we could make those, uh, and again, additional commit uh, condition, correct? Uh, Chair Twait, yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah, the, the commission could add a condition related to that. Uh, I would just say I'm I'm um, um, I'm not entirely sure what the best either process or the best contact for that would be. Um, but so that could be something that, uh, and I'm just throwing this out there. It could be in the condition that that it could be that that staff uh, works to find the the best source for. Um, you know, such a a review. Skilled experience. And, and I think with what's going on, as somebody said, an epidemic of it, there's a lot of people out there with a lot of resources that could probably give that answer. And, and you're right, I think if we just delineate something uh, without pinning it down to something that might not be feasible, that we can do it that way. So again, that would need to be a condition that we would add, correct? Um, and then also maybe for Megan or whoever, uh, I would really like to see uh, um, a motion for an amendment to restrict the splitting on the weekends. And so I would like to have somebody make that motion, but is it a proper for me to make it from the chair or do I need to pass it to, I need to pass it, okay. So either we can go through the process of passing the gavel to Vice Chair Fikes or somebody make the motion for me, please. I can. Commissioner Halstead. Go, actually, uh, I, Ms. Fikes is much better at this than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Through the chair, I'll go ahead and make a motion to amend PZ. Help me out here. Uh, PZ 2021 24 <coughs> to include a condition for hours of operation for splitting to take place during not to commence on Saturday and Sunday. So as do, a con condition do, of the permit, okay. yes, I think. Do we, we have a second? A second. Thank you. Okay. So um, any discussion on that? Vice Chair Fikes? Uh, yeah, again, I mean, I, I wholeheartedly agree with folks. I just don't know as somebody sitting on the sidelines on Saturday and Sunday, I certainly would not want to wake up and have pancakes to, you know, it would certainly be annoying, but again, it brings me right back to these folks live there. And so I'm not sure if that's the right avenue to attack this and give, it, it is a tool, I do recognize that. So if the public has an issue and they wanna complain, it is a tool inside of the permit that can have issues for the applicant later on if there's a complaint. But again, I just, don't see where it's really going towards the ATVs, the four-wheelers, the neighbor's chainsaw. I did, you're, you're picking something out of a crowd of all kinds of these other noise, and who's gonna be out there with a noise meter saying exactly what this is? So, I, like I say, I, I agree with the testimony, but I don't think that's the right tool. But that's my, my two cents. Was that a mosquito sound, or was that some mos <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay. Um, Mr. Halstead. I would agree with Ms. Fikes. I think uh, there's so many other noises and activities that are happening on that road and in that area on the weekend that this is would be a drop in the bucket and stopping this one thing is not going to stop the amount of noises generated in that area. Very good. Anyone else? Mr. Greenberg. Yeah, just uh, on, on the fire hazard, I think your, your, your best bet is to talk to forestry and they, they do a defensible space plan. So as long as they practice defensible space, which means you basically don't pile all the wood against a tree, it's gonna carry the fire or something like that. Um, as long as they follow what uh, the best practices are from the Division of Forestry, I think that would be fine for hazard mitigation. All right, regarding the amendment, what do you, you have anything to add to that? Uh, so to add, to, to add the defensible space? Uh, regarding hours of, of the- Oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, no, I think, I think that's fine. And I would just say that um, I think the testimony is primarily noise as a concern with maybe a little bit of traffic as far as 
um, you know, worried about kids on the on the road, which is again, I think that's beyond our our scope as far as it's normal traffic and and make sure your kids are safe. I guess is my quest or my uh, response there. But I think if if the applicant is okay with this and it shows the community that we're trying to find a common ground and we aren't going to end this thing up in an appeal somewhere and, and get nowhere. I think it seems like a good place to start. They seem to be okay with that. I, I don't see it being anything but helpful. And um, so in my opinion, I, again, I, Monday through Friday is kind of the same thing for people in a lot of ways, but when the weekends come, you know, I, I agree. I, I don't want that to be the norm every weekend, um, especially if they work a regular job. Saturday and Sunday could become the day that all of a sudden we were doing a lot of splitting, and that to me goes against a little bit of what we're trying to accomplish here, so that's why I thought it was a good amendment, and so I would, of course, be voting for it. Anyone else? All right, we, I guess, are going to vote on the amendment to limit um, wood splitting from happening on Saturdays and Sundays. Commissioner Halstead? No. Vice Chair Fikes? No. Commissioner Greenberg? The to limit no splitting on Saturday and Sunday. Yes. They don't split on Saturday and Sunday, correct? I'm voting yes is that they do limit. Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Commissioner, oh, you do that. Never mind. That's your job. <laughs> <laughs> um, Commissioner Woodard? Yes. And Chair Twait? Yes. All right. Uh, motion passes. Okay. So now we have the main motion as amended, um, which would be open for any other conditions, which would require. Um, the forestry comment that you made, Commissioner Greenberg, would you like to make that amendment, a motion for that amendment? Uh, I move um, that we amend 2021-24 to include uh, requirements for practicing defensible space as defined by the Division of Forestry. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? Seeing none, please call the roll. Vice Chair Fikes? Yes. Commissioner Greenberg? Yes. Commissioner Woodard? Yes. Chair Twait? Yes. Commissioner Halstead? Yes. Motion passes. All right, uh, we have the main motion as amended twice now. Is there any other discussion or any other proposed amendments? Seeing none, could we please call the roll or the vote for the main motion as amended? Commissioner Woodard? No. Chair Twait? Yes. Commissioner Halstead? Yes. Vice Chair Fikes? Yes. Commissioner Greenberg? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Um, I would like to thank everybody for coming and testifying. I appreciate that. Very well done. Uh, there is a 15-day appeal period that an affected party can file with the clerk's office. If there isn't one filed in 15 days, then the conditional use permit will be granted. So thank you. Mr. Halstead. Uh, can I request a, a couple minute at ease, give people a chance to clear up? Absolutely. Great idea.
starving. <laughs> okay, we are back on the record. Okay. So we need a motion to reconsider. Okay, so the prevailing party, which is who we identified. So. So um, I make a motion to reconsider the amendment. Uh, nope, not no? yet. Just the question. A motion to reconsider the amendment to to the question, the question um, to the to am amendment to just not, the resolution. Not the amendment yet, no. Um, to pass resolution 2124. To pass resolution 2124. 2021 24. 2021 24. Okay, and then we need a second. Second. All right. Any objections? Seeing none, we have the motion before us once again. Okay. And that can be made by anyone or just the prevailing party again? Prevailing? Anyone? Any other commissioners? Okay. A Mr. Greenberg. A motion to amend uh, resolution 2021-24. Um, in reconsideration of the hours of operation, no, that's, doesn't need to. Uh, yeah, and so is that condition number? Will it have a number attached to it? It should, correct? Uh, condition number one. Well, no, because there was. I had um, used the, the hours of operation, which was going to be seven people, and then oh. right. six already. So I was going to be seven people. Oh, right. Six already, so this would be the first one, so condition number seven. There you go. A motion to amend condition number seven to include hours of operation if the equipment used is an electric splitter. Could you, we need to further clarify that. Hours of operation. Hours of operation to include Saturdays and Sundays. If there's if an electric splitter. If they use an electric splitter. Okay. And, and a second. Second. All right. Discussion. Any discussion on that amendment? I just would Mr. like to put eloquently put, sir. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? All right, seeing none, we will vote on the amendment. All right, Chair Tweet? Yes. Commissioner Halstead? Yes. Vice Chair Fikes? Yes. Commissioner Greenberg? Yes. Commissioner Woodard? Yes. A motion passes. All right. Now we have the main motion as amended. And is there no other discussion with that? We will go ahead and call the vote for that. All right. Commissioner Halstead? Yes. Vice Chair Fikes? Yes. Commissioner Greenberg? Yes. Commissioner Woodard? Yes. And Chair Twait? Yes. Motion passes. All right, we will move on now. Item G, unfinished business, we have none. Item H, new business. Two items tonight, H1 for action approval, conditionally donating certain city-owned properties described as two approximate one and a quarter acre parcels to be subdivided from a portion of the 72 acre, more or less, portion of the southeast quarter lying east of Tract A, Kenai Meadows, Kenai parcel number 0390165 to the Kenai Peninsula Housing Initiative for the Development of Restricted Income in Senior Housing. Um, well, can we get a motion? Vice Chair Fikes. Through the chair, I'd like to make a motion for approval of number one. Conditional, wait a minute. I think you can just say H1 will be fine. H1, thank All you. All right. And do we have a second? Second. <laughs> All right, staff report. Thank you, Chair Twait and uh, fellow commissioners. Um, 
this this ordinance um, is uh, for Kenai Peninsula Housing uh, Initiative, and actually, um, uh, I'm going to start by uh, referencing page 48 of the staff report. Um, uh, you can see the subject properties here, and so um, uh, uh, Kenai Peninsula Housing Initiative (KPHI) um, has uh, the if you can see on the bottom left two parcels, those have been previously donated to K KPHI, uh, and those for, for projects for, um, one was for uh, low-income housing and another was for senior housing. And both of these were previously donated to, uh, donated by the city for these uh, projects in 2016. Um, there's also in, um, in this uh, report, you can see from April 7, 2021, um, Stephen Rouse, executive director of KPHI, actually presented to council, uh, showing um, that those um, two donated parcels, those projects have been constructed. Um, so those are actually com completed at this time. Um, in addition, on that same date, um, uh, uh, Stephen Rouse requested two additional properties. Uh, to be considered uh, for donation, also for low-income housing um, uh, for one parcel and um, senior housing for another parcel. And you can see where uh, um, on page 48 where those two uh, parcels um, would be uh, considered with this um, uh, with this uh, ordinance uh, for um, conditionally donating um, um, these lands. Um, and then um, you can also note uh, on this, you know, staff is proposing that a 60 foot right of way dedication be um, a, a part of any of this uh, conditional uh, donation of, of city lands um, where that would, um, as you can see, actually you can see a little bit better um, uh, in a different aerial, but you can see with 2nd Street, 3rd Street, 4th Street, um, that it has, you know, a, a dedicated right-of-way cutting through and kind of creating these, you know, residential um, uh, uh, neighborhoods. Um, by providing that 60-foot um, right-of-way, it provides access to the rest of the s roughly 72 acres of city-owned property, which just gives that additional access to, to for, you know, the city to, to utilize for any future projects um, um, that the, the city might have. Um, and so, let's see, the total request is for two and a half uh, acres. Um, and I did want to note also in, um, as an attachment, um, let me find it here first. It's actually on page 66 of the staff report. You can find this is their, um, their latest concept for the these potentially donated um, um, properties, and you can see um, um, that that, that um, you know on the east would be uh, senior housing, and then and then low income housing uh, to the west. And so these are the concepts they'd be utilizing uh, if the if if this was uh, approved by council. Uh, it would require um, the uh, you know the the KPHI to also pay for the subdivision uh, uh, of these um, parcels as well. Um, that concludes my presentation. Um, happy to stand for any questions on on this ordinance. All right, thank you. Uh, and we will open it up for discussion. Commissioner Halstead. Uh, just can, I don't know if it's probably too early to even say something like that, but you know, as they're going in this area and there's all that additional space behind and we're adding this right away, would they potentially continue north and keep building out that subdivision? Is that the plan or is that a goal or is that a thought that's even been discussed? Or I guess it's really dependent on us donating more land, right? Uh, Mr. Foster. Chair Twig, Commissioner Halstead. I, I don't think that's that's um, that's a part of this proposal at all. It's really just these two um, additional roughly one and one quarter um, parcels. Um, I, I don't have any indication that um, it would be beyond this. I'd say I, I suppose that that has a potentiality. Um, from from my point of view, thinking of the subdivision, um, 
that would have to occur with this donation would be just that there was um, uh, enough access to the rest of this, you know, roughly 70 uh, acres of, of city-owned, you know, land for any future, you know, development or, or projects. And so this proposed 60-foot you know, right away dedication would would certainly provide that. Um, Nightingale Street, actually, you can see here um, um, that is you know um, uh, a, a dedicator right away, but it, it doesn't it doesn't exist. It's not built. It's not you know. So it it you know that would actually have to be constructed in order to access um, um, from Nightingale. Um, and then you have Florida Avenue, California Avenue, actually. As far as existing, California Avenue probably has you know one of the better you know access to that um, uh, roughly seventy acres. Um, so I think the 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 intention of you know especially this proposed sixty foot right of way is just to ensure that there would be um, good access you know to the rest of this parcel, and it does align with with the uh, with the neighboring you know subdivisions at four third second and, and first. You know, streets. So, uh, just more of a concern of if if there was a potential to keep going north, or if we were to development in the future, would it be wise or pertinent to um, put the onus on them to kind of build out that right away or begin the approach? yeah, I guess the approach for it, so that yeah. as we're building it, that get, gets us a little bit further into that subdivision instead of after the fact now they got fences or something up and we got to be cautious about causing more harm than good uh through the chair commissioner halstead i'll have to check code uh for that certainly these um um potentially two um donated parcels would be primarily accessed off of readout just like the previously mm -hmm. developed uh, parcels um, I'll have to check the code to see because our code does give um, with any future developments it does you know uh, set out who how and, and when you know the these roads need to be developed I'm not sure if these proposed ones would actually trigger that but I, I, I I'd like to take a look at code and see um, see if that was the case or not yeah but just Again, that they, they'd already be leveling out everything else, just go another 60 feet to the left, and that would be a done deal. But while well, they got it, or just adds another 60 feet of labor on their side of it, <laughs> which you know sounds cool for me, but not for, probably not for them. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Greenberg, you have something? Yeah, I was just thinking about would that also would it be advantageous for them to also extend water and sewer if they're going to do that you know well i don't know if it'd be advantageous to them but would that be something that we'd also consider and then another thing another question i was thinking about was how do these affect what private developers do is this something that is um makes is it because or or does, does it hurt private developers because these they're getting the land but is it because that the uh, people that live there are going to have to have special needs or, or you know special financial situation that it doesn't make a difference? So. Uh, Mr. Foster, uh, uh, through the chair, uh, Commissioner Greenberg, that is my understanding that 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 you know KPHI you know with that with, with the donation is by you know that's possible through providing the senior housing and, and the low income housing, um, in in you know knowing that. You know, KPHI has been able to demonstrate, you know, the demand, you know, for, for that kind of housing in the community. And certainly um, knowing that there's difficulty for the market to be able to um, basically sometimes respond and to provide that for that kind of, of housing. So um, it is specifically to, specific to the relationship for low-income housing and for senior housing, which is really what it would allow for the land you know, donation um, component of it. So, so it does, it, de it definitely provides uh, a service for a subset of our population, but if we did include something like extending the road and the utilities, that provides a service for the entire city, you know, through that. I think that's kind of a good thing to look at. Yeah, 
I guess that's really not a question for you no. to answer. It's yeah, just a comment. Was, so yeah, yeah, comment. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep. Um, any other discussion? All right. Seeing none, please call the roll. Commissioner Greenberg? Yes. Commissioner Woodard? Yes. Chair Twaite? Yes. Commissioner Halstead? Yes. Motion passes. All right, we'll move on oh, to H2. Sorry, Vice Chair Fikes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's done eating. <laughs> Thank you. All right, item H2 for action approval, conditionally donating certain city-owned property described as one approximate two-acre parcel to be subdivided from a portion of a 6.8-acre more or less portion of the east of Tract 4, Barron Park Subdivision, KPB parcel number 04501035 to Triumvirate Theater for the development of a theater facility. Can I get a motion, please? Commissioner Halstead. Uh, I move we approve new business action approval item number H2. All right, can I get a second? Commissioner second. Woodard. Commissioner Woodard seconds. All right, staff report. Thank you, Chair Twait. Um, uh, so this is this is another uh, ordinance for a uh, potential conditioning uh, conditional uh, uh, don donation of, of city lands uh, on May 20th 2021 uh, Joseph Rizzo on behalf of the triumvirate theater requested consideration of a donation of approximately two acres um, north of the Dobbins Beck Park to construct a theater uh, facility um, uh, many of you you, you know that um, their theater had burned down um, in February, they've been looking for a new uh, a new home. Um, their theater facility was a complete loss, um, and so they're looking to uh, rebuild um, their their theater and, and looking to do so in the city of Kenai um, with utilization of of this conditional donation of approximately two two acres. And, and I in the um, we don't have any drawings at this time. I, I do believe um, um, Joseph said he was going to try and provide some in time for um, the council uh, hearing. Um, and but I do believe it, that the replacement um, theater would be approximately 5,000 square feet as well. Um, and um, actually, let me direct you to um, page. 74, yes, thank you. Uh, and this shows the approximate uh, two-acre uh, area for the, the proposed donation. And this is actually just north um, of the, um, uh, the new dog park uh, that's going to be uh, located there. Um, and um, there's also in, you know, this is really just as an FYI, there is um, um, uh, starting on page 75, there is a, a little methodology of, of how I went about, you know, creating the, the property uh, uh, search uh, on that. And actually, oh, uh, Commissioner Greenberg actually uh, assisted me with that as well. So very, um, um, very thankful for that assistance uh, where we utilized the, the database and GIS and, 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 uh, and the, uh, the criteria that the theater was looking for. Um, and so, you know, in this we find there is, you know, really four parcels that we, we, we found that would probably suit them best. Um, they reviewed those, showed interest in this parcel. Um, it's, you know, it's centrally located. It's with other civic uses, you know, in the community. And, and um, you, know, uh, you know, staff thinks could be a really good um, location and good fit uh, for that. Um, uh, for that there um, and then of course this one would also require um, the theater to pay for the subdivision uh, as well um, and then the theater there's a little uh, starting on page 71 a, a little write-up um, from Joseph Rizzo um, with the triumvirate theater just noting that they're also looking to utilize uh, Rasmussen um, grant you know application that they'll be uh, submitting either late this summer or early fall um, um, to see if that can be a part of, of um, um, you know, building a, a, a new theater uh, for, you know, for the community. Um, and, you know, I think it could be pretty 
um, pretty good fit and you know pretty exciting to, to have it in in a central location in, in the city of, of Kenai um, that concludes my presentation and happy to answer any questions all right thank you any discussion I've, I've got a question that may or may actually could have went back to the last one so do we uh, there's since this is in the previous one for sure not a parcel at this point in time do we have a value of what that donation is and and what is there any benefit to the city as far as that donation goes i mean other than having the revenue in the city and, and that I'm, I'm curious how that works question one and maybe you don't know the answer to that um and and question two and again this probably gets a little farther in the weeds than it should be on this one here but they're they're building that burned down i'm i've been told they have have insurance for that or had insurance on that how does that work as far as I mean so I don't know as far as rebuilding cost goes I'm wondering why they aren't rebuilding in their facility that they're at I guess and again I, I'm just curious more than anything because uh, they have some structure out there water and sewer and things like that they're or well and septic I should say um, and I'm just I, I guess I'm curious did they they came to uh, to the city or did the city reach out to them uh chair twait um uh, they reached out to the city as far as the value goes of what that donation is to donate that land is there a value oh that's, that's a borough thing but there will be this is the baron park one okay yeah oh chair twait in addition um um uh for the uh, city council uh, meeting uh, staffs looking to see if we can also find some some comparables uh, to, to kind of you know get a ballpark uh, for what that would that would be um, and in just one other thought I mean it's it's potential that um, if you know if found to be um, uh, just it could be something that could be required of you know of of the theater to potentially you know pay for appraisal as well we know with you know the the donations certainly they're gonna have to pay to do you know the subdivision um, I, I, I'm not sure whether um, um, you know to to sort of require that is necessarily in you know, either required yeah. or necessarily in the best interest but right. it's but certainly in in, the, in I understand the the, the idea of donating land to know what you know what that, that value is and yeah and, and I guess my my bigger question is the other one the Kenai Peninsula Housing Initiative uh, I know since we've seen that happen that will get through the process and get built relatively quick this one if we donate this chunk of land and they don't have the funding to build a 5,000 square foot building for 10 years say it what does that I mean that's a pretty valuable piece of land that I would think would be could be better served if it just had vacant for the next 10 years and, and so I guess I'm just curious more than anything I, I don't know it, there's no time constraints as to they have to be building in any certain time it's just, it's just donated and they there goes the moose uh, see fit to build whenever they can a build is that how that's going to work uh, Chair Twait, that's a good that's a good question. I do know there there have have been other um, similar types of ordinances with donated land that have had um, uh, a time frame associated with it. Um, That's why I got Councilman Glenn Denning next to me. He said that there is a, you have a better there's a 2023 deadline they have to have it completed oh, okay, by or okay. it reverts back it, to the city. It, it's, the, okay. it's the action items that they listed. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, that's I'll be quiet. I've got all the answers I need now then. Um, all right, so I'm good. Any other discussion? <laughs> Commissioner Halstead. Was there any Thank thought you. in uh, donating a uh, gently used bowling alley to the <laughs> Any other discussion?
All right. Seeing none, please call the roll. Chair Twain? Yes. Commissioner Halstead? Yes. Vice Chair Fites? Yes. Commissioner Greenberg? Yes. Commissioner Woodard? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Uh, item I, pending items, we have none, takes us to J reports. J1 is City Council, Councilman Glenn Denning. Thank you, uh, Chair Twait. Um, the uh, City Council met on June 16th, and uh, we had the, uh, the following uh, actions taken care of. <clears throat> oh, D1, a public hearing, we postponed, postponed a ordinance conditionally donating uh, certain city uh, properties, uh, parcels, uh, from a portion of a 72 acre more or less uh, tract of Kenai Meadows, I don't like how this is written, to Kenai Peninsula Housing Initiative of restricted uh, income uh, senior housing. And what we did is it was uh, we postponed it to the 7th of July so that the Planning Commission could take action on it as you did tonight. Okay, so the, the order of operations is the planning commission discusses it. We learn from that discussion and then we consider it in an ordinance. Uh, we acted uh, unanimously to accept and appropriate drug seizure funds uh, to the police uh, small tools account. Uh, we uh, postponed an ordinance conditionally donating a certain city property. Uh, this two acre parcel that we just discussed again that is just an order of operations uh, it, it must go through the planning and zoning commission first before we look at it because we we learn we gain wisdom from from your discussion and uh, and uh, it's actually the law that you look at it first uh, we postponed indefinitely an ordinance authorizing travel tourism and hospitality services that was on the radio what we found is that is that it's perhaps not necessary now and uh, perhaps uh, in the winter time or something like that if there's uh, more economic stress to uh, certain segments of our business community we could uh, we could entertain that idea again uh, we authorized and awarded a contract extension for ambulance build building again that was on the radio discussed uh, I brought my packet with if you if you uh, if you need uh, but what they do is is when a service is provided by our by our uh, fire department ambulance the uh, the billing and coding is taken care of through uh, systems design west and uh, it seems to be a satisfactory uh, uh, means of of, uh, of billing people and then accounting for the funds uh, that are generated and spent uh, we uh, authorized an equipment purchase agreement for a replacement sludge press at the water treatment plant. That's, that's part of the uh, continuing uh, maintenance and upgrade of our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, this, was, this was in our capital projects budget. Uh, so what we did is we authorized purchase of this device. Uh, it went through a competitive bidding process. And then when it appears on, on location, there will be a separate ordinance uh, to fund the installation of it. And well, let's see what else is we uh, extended the airport concession agreement at the municipal airport for an additional year, and it was basically under under uh, the uh, the original conditions where they they pay a, a certain percentage of their cash flow. Uh, we had uh, given them a, a great leeway, uh, forbearance, if you would, uh, when when there there was construction going on, no airplanes flying. Uh, they didn't. They, bar they could barely keep their lights on and, and pay their staff. So uh, basically, we we did not require any funds from them. So we're getting back towards uh, a more normal uh, business operation with them. Uh, we adopted unanimously authorizing the termination of the facility management services agreement for the Kenai Recreational Center with the Boys and Girls Club. 
and authorize the new agreement with the Boys and Girls Club of Peninsula to operate the teen center. So what we did is is the uh, the upper portion where the teen activities are. That's going to continue under the auspice of the of the uh, Boys and Girls Club. The downside downstairs where the, uh, the gymnasium and the exercise equipment of the city is going to run that. Okay, and uh, of course uh, the uh, the city is responsible for the maintenance and and the uh, and the care of the of the, of the building. And if, uh, say, the Boys and Girls Club uh, have a maintenance issue, okay, there's a, a work request form that has been created so we can, we can uh, identify, document what the concerns are and then follow through on any actions that have, have been taken. I think, I think, I think it's a, a good situation. The, the operation of a building such as that was actually out of the scope of the Boys and Girls Club, and they asked that uh, we, we take over the... Uh, the gymnasium and, and the uh, conditioning uh, exercise equipment. And what else did we do? Here? Uh, we approved the liquor license for the Oilers and Pizza Paratosos. Uh, we uh, approved the special use permit for the uh, Weaver Brothers trailer truck storage and the uh, special use permit to the state of Alaska for the air tanker, tanker reload base. Uh, these are all things that you've considered before. And then we had the final bite of the apple. Uh, we approved uh, uh, the uh, bond amounts for the city manager, city clerk, and finance director. Uh, this is just a prudent uh, 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 business practice, and actually it's required by, uh, by, by state law that uh, we provide bonding for, uh, for these, these uh, three officials. Uh, in the in the case of uh, in, in the advent of, uh, of how can we say uh, financial mismanagement, uh, and then we approved unanimously a resolution of the city of Kenai opposing uh, alternate four proposed by the North Pacific Management Council that would close all federal waters in Cook Inlet to commercial fishing, along with an accompanying letter from the mayor as con comments to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's proposed regulations closing the EEZ to commercial fishing uh, prior to July 6 comment deadline. Well, what it is is, is out, in the, out in the rip out where the, the fish are. Uh, that's under the uh, Stevens-Magnuson Act. That's considered federal waters. And uh, there's a uh, well, it's, it's going to be commented on, but it's possible that that could be closed to uh, commercial drifters. That's about half their potential of fish, okay, and that will really, really uh, devastate our, uh, our waterfront here. I think we're down to one major uh, processor, and then we have boutique processors and all of this, and, oh, I don't know, I think was an icicle out of sewer picks up off the beach, but we're, we're down to, as I said in the 60s, down to stems and seeds for this type of operation. And it's and it's important that we uh, that we that we stick up for our fishermen. They're an important part of our of our culture and, and our economy, really. And uh, that that ends my that ends my comments. I brought my packet. If you have any questions, I've got a lot of questions <laughs> now. But uh, um, uh, can you talk about board of adjustment? Uh, coming up hearings from appeals? Yeah, yeah, stand by. Okay, Board of Adjustment, and I did not know which one there was, but there's an appeal on 720, another appeal on 723, and another appeal on 730. Uh, so we have those, those three, those three uh, coming, coming up, and uh, uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Foster could uh, remind me of the details if you, if you have them. <laughs> Um, the July 30th, kind of working backwards, July 30th, that was the um, conditional use permit that was approved by the commission for the eight units on um, 4th um, in uh, Byler Contracting was the applicant uh, mm -hmm. for that one. And that was also the one on the same uh, evening, the, um, the plat uh, uh, to subdivide that two and a half acre parcel into um, two um, parcels uh, was was also recommended approval and then subsequently sent to um, the borough. 
Um, and then the 20th and 23rd, um, those are both from um, the um, Dole Check Guide Services and Lodging. So um, one appeal is of the approval for the guide services, and then the other is an appeal of the denial of the lodging. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Glenn Denning? Commissioner Halstead. I'm just curious if it would behoove us to be present at those meetings. Uh, obviously, it always is, but um, is it wise or? or Actually, I, I, uh, the way it's constructed, it's, it's called de novo. In other words, we are the Board of Adjustment of the City Council, and we take it up as if nothing had happened before we can consider everything all the evidence all the comments everything that's been on the record we consider every and, and uh, everything that uh, people will be here to uh, to testify uh, I think actually it's a public meeting I think it would be a pretty good teaching tool It'd be a good uh, teachable moment to come and learn and uh, and sometimes we learn on the job too uh, our our attorney will be the city attorney Okay, and he will advise and guide us, and uh, and I don't know who will appear with you know with the with the uh, petitioners, but uh, to answer your question in the short way, yes, come on, come on down. Six p.m. Correct. For those, I believe yes. so. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Very good. Any other questions for Mr. Glendenning? If not, we will move on to item J two, borough planning, Vice Chair Fikes. Yeah, we haven't met since the last time we were in session. The next scheduled one is Monday the 28th. All right. Probably no questions then, so we'll move on to city administration. Mr. Foster. Thank you, Chair Twait. Um, just a couple items of note for our next meeting on July 14th. Um, we have one uh, assignment um, for consideration. We have one special use permit. Uh, and then we have two uh, proposed land sale uh, ordinances, uh, and these are from the resolution 2018-12, um, that there are 10 um, parcels identified, I think it was about five years ago, where a resolution the council passed um, to give lessees of airport lands the opportunity to um, uh, purchase um, um, the, the property. Um, and so we have uh, two that are on, on track to be um, considered by the commission on, on July uh, 14th. Um, and I think that's it. All right, any questions? All right, seeing none, we will move on then to additional public comment. See anyone here? Nobody online, so we'll move along to L. No informational items. Next meeting is July 14th. Anyone not planning on attending? All right, move on to Commissioner's comments and questions. Commissioner Woodard. Oh, good. All right, Commissioner Halstead. Uh, just uh, thank you to Mr. Foster for uh, teachable moments. Uh, the uh, planning was very well presented, and I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Commissioner Greenberg. Yeah, I second that. Thanks for the uh, work session. That was enjoyable. Vice Chair Fikes. Yeah, for those of us that didn't get to have all of it, at least we can review it later. So thank you for that, too. <laughs> Absolutely. And I would just, I guess I could have asked Mr. Foster this earlier, but Back in the day, we used to have some land use maps and, and just some maps in here, like when we were talking about the VIP stuff and everybody was trying to get their head wrapped around yeah. what that was. If we could have those reprinted and, and up. Plan, yeah, have. so that would just be helpful, I think, to get people oriented if they are trying to, to do so. They took them down when they painted and they took all the pictures down. They used to have pictures all the way around the back and they took those down too. Sure, yeah. Um, uh, so we, I mean, we could do a zoning map. I mean, there, we could actually probably, we could make um, zoning you know, more, more. Yeah, I was going to say we could hang, <laughs> we could print more up. maps than we could probably hang in here. <laughs> but it, I'd say if, if, if there is any others, you know, uh, 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 zoning could be 
comp plan land use map, anything that we think we might um, want to reference, as you just let me know, and we can we can we got a plotter upstairs, and we can print that out. Um, we can definitely do that. Great. All right. That's all I have. So, um, with that being said, the meeting complete. Uh, the items complete. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>